I'm Thorsten S. Wiedemann. I'm the founder and director of Amaze. It's a video games festival about alternative and independent games. I do it in Berlin and in other countries, like in South Africa. Um, we also had a very nice small games exhibition up there. So on Sunday, you can go up there and play some games. It's always switched off when there are talks. So there are a lot of talks. So there are, the games are not on always. But um, if you find a moment, you definitely can play games. And um, I'm very happy to be here again. It's really good. And we're here for the Hyper Talks today. Second time in Kosovo in Pristina, Hyper Talks. And Hyper Talks are a special format what we created for a Maze Festival with Lorenzo Pia, who is my program manager. And um, because, I mean, everybody knows Pecha Kucha. Pecha Kucha is this format, six minutes, 20, 20 seconds, 20 si slides. And it's, yeah, it's too close-minded. It's just like too much structured. So we were thinking we want to have a fast-paced format. We're going to call it Hyper Talks. Every speaker has only five minutes. Of course, a little bit longer if this person needs a little bit more time. And um, yeah, today we're going to have five speakers. And three are from Kosovo. I'm very proud of that. And thank you for the organization to make this happen. So, and we also have two speakers from Berlin. And they're going to talk, talk just five minutes. So it's not going to get boring. Yes, uh, last, last year somebody was telling me, it's a really nice format because even when it's just boring, it just ends after five minutes, right? <laughs> so, hyper, hyper is the thing, and everybody knows Scooter. Usually we always play Scooter. It's a German band, you know, <laughs> Scooter? Do you know Scooter? Yeah. Yeah. We changed this. No, we don't. No, 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 no Scooter anymore. And um, yeah, I don't want to talk too much because it's not my stage. I'd like to introduce and bring on stage and please give a warm welcome to Hannah Jeremy. She's, uh, she's passionate for business, education, technology and co-founder of Scholar Digital and Star Labs. And the topic or the title of the talk is Current Systems and the Revolution We Need. Thank you very much. Can I have the computer as well? Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. of course. Thank you have slides. <laughs> Thank you. So, hi, everyone. I'm Hana Chirime. Thank you for presenting me and thank you for coming here today to uh, spend some time to listen to us and what we have to say in five minutes. So, I hope I can wrap up everything in five minutes. And the request was to uh, talk about a major talk. So, hopefully, I'm going to, to wrap it up good. So, my topic is current system and the revolution we need. Five minutes on education. How, it, how everything started, how education started. We need to go back to our roots and see why education uh, actually exists. So everything started from mothers, proudly to say that, but uh, the need was that, the, the initial need, the most fundamental need was to keep society in control and uh, to show them orientation. So the main subjects, the first two subjects invented were writing and drawings which were taught by mothers at the time, so that they can teach their children uh, to find orientation, to leave trails behind, and to be able to read uh, the next ones that they will find in, in some other locations that they, that they travel. It took 10 centuries to uh, become official education and to, for the schools to, to be in, invented. And the schools were, were invented uh, initially only for the boys, white boys, and uh, princesses, privileged ones. Not every princess was privileged to have some uh, education. And the, the subjects that were taught were, were uh, mainly mathematics, arts, drawings, physics, because of the ancient Rome, and some uh, literature. Something happened in the meantime which revolutionized the education, which is the industrialization that happened. The steam uh, engines and factories turned the wheel into another direction, but very, for, for a very little uh, spike, because still the same subjects were taught in the schools and the universities came to life. In the 11th century, 
we see the first universities that were uh, founded in three countries, Italy, France, and England. But still the same subjects were taught. English was added, plus minus some uh, subjects, history, chemistry, physics, mathematics, and geography as core subjects. Of course, music uh, or art. From then and until now, we're speaking from the 10th century and until now, which is the 21st century, we are uh, learning the very same subjects. So the same English, mathematics, physics, and so on. And the way that we are learning and the way that the teaching is being done in the schools is still the same, like in the picture that Einstein is, is showing. While in the meantime, what happened in only 50 the last 50 years is that the computers got invented, the internet came to life, process automation, which is very current uh, right now, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, augmented reality, and cryptocurrency, which is revolutionizing the finance sector. So it took 20 centuries for the education system to uh, uh, come to life and 50 years, only 50 years for technology evolution, not to, not to mention only 20, last 20 years which revolutionized everything. Of course, huge gap got created between what the education system is providing and what the market is requesting. While we have a trend line which is a very flat trend line of the education, we have a huge spike of technology and the gap between them is uh, becoming bigger and bigger every, every day. Jobs that will be replaced very soon by the artificial intelligence, which most of us are not really aware of, are telemarketers, surgeons and dentists, accountants, auditors, drivers and pilots, lawyers, mathematicians, physics and chemistry. So basically everything that the kids are learning today in schools. While future jobs that are being created or invented are problem solver, professional gamer, app developer, virtual teacher, drone controller, digital image consultant, asteroid miner, genetic counselor. So we have 65% of today's 20 years old who will have jobs that don't yet exist and they still are learning something which is uh, which will not exist uh, tomorrow education 2.0 and what we need to teach these kids today so that they fit the future and that they are uh, able to to find a job in the future is robotics electronics programming of course, technology uh, as a whole, fact-finding, classroom modernization so that it fits the way that these subjects uh, are taught, entrepreneurship and teamwork, creativity, problem solving, EQ and vision, because subjects that they are learning today, such as English, mathematics, physics, chemistry, history, literature, geography, can be very easily found in Google. Why? Because they are learning fact, facts. And fact finding is uh, very accessible today from everyone's phone. So we need to teach them how to think. Of course, change takes time because the government uh, is run by very outdated people so that uh, they initially learn and they uh, understand the importance and they influence change, it will take so much time, but in the meantime, we can be the main influencers as a society, but uh, mainly if we have one of the roles that I put in the slide. So if, if you are a teacher, most changes in schools come from teachers, so what you can do is you can educate yourself so that you can uh, implement the latest trends in the classrooms. If you are a parent, you can educate yourself to influence uh, the government. If you are a school director, you have the power to implement the latest curriculas. If you are a politician, you can raise the voice. And if you are a private sector, you can definitely make space for kids uh, through private, private courses. Thank you for coming.
Well done. Thank you. It was in five minutes and 30 seconds. You did very good. Hyper, hyper, I would say. Thank you very much. No, of course not. No time for this. <laughs> but thank you. It was very interesting. Um, do you know the shoes, what I'm wearing? These shoes I was wearing when I was for 48 hours in VR. And it was actually the first talk I gave at Dokutech. It was in prison and I got invited by Kushrim and by Raiko to come and talk about my, my 48 hours trip. And I was wearing the shoes and I was never seeing them. No, 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 good joke. Okay, next on stage is Marek Plichter. He's a very good friend and a game designer. He did Spirits and Future Unfolding. And his title is Turn the Other Cheek. <coughs> Welcome. Hello, all, to oh. Hello all together. Um, yeah, as Dustin said, I, I work as a game designer and visual artist in Berlin. Um, and I'm also very interested in meditation and sports. And since one and a half years, I stopped doing games uh, after doing it professionally for eight years and focused mainly on meditation and sports. And I was doing this for health reasons. I believe that we get more free if we do sports and meditation. And I would kind of like to ask every one of you like to look into this because it's very good. And yeah, like why is meditation and why is sports great? Um, for one reason, um, if you meditate, you get more stress resistant. So if something stressful in, the, in your daily life comes up, you will be uh, more chilled, you can react more rationally. And of course, if you do sports, you know, like our body is our vehicle, we use it every day uh, and we grow old with it. And if you don't care for it, then maybe with 50, 60, we will have not such a pleasant, pleasant life anymore. And for this reason, um, I want to do an exercise with you. I actually would like to give you like an insight. Uh, I, I mean, if I had like a lot of time, I would like show you meditation, or I would show you some really interesting sportive exercises, but I only have five minutes. But there is like this one particular exercise that kind of combines meditation, sports, and it is also an interesting intellectual challenge. And why do we need it? When we are at these tech conferences, or if we learn, if we work in front of the computer, we go very much in our head. And we kind of neglect our body. And being in our head, I think, I believe, means that we get less happy. We get more unhappy. So I want to take you out of your head, especially after a whole day of listening to talks and processing them with your head, and do an exercise. So please all come to the front, like spread here and here. So you have to stand up. Put your stuff aside and come left and right, or you can always come on the stage. Francisca? Okay, um, try to still see me, so just circle around me. We will do two exercises. The first exercise is quite easy. The second exercise will be hard for you. Not physically, but mentally. So the first exercise is um, I will push Francisca's shoulder and she will just uh, give in. So uh, don't give in. If I push her and she doesn't go in, give in, she shows resistance. That's not what we want. We want ease. We want if there's uh, pressure, if there's stress, we want our system, our dynamic system to just take it and yeah, let, make it flow somewhere else. So you do it to me. Okay, uh, grab a partner and do this for 30 seconds. Now, grab any partner, anyone who is standing next to you. He wants to push me. Yeah. You want to push me. And you and me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And try to challenge your partner. Okay, stop. <clears throat> Look at me. 
So now the next thing. Uh, this might be a like, little bit provocative for you, but uh, come here. The next thing is something more sensitive, the face. If you ever got slapped in the face, you know it's uncomfortable. But the point about meditation is that you observe pain or even pleasant sensation, and you're not reacting to it. You just relax and observe it as a sensation, as an information, not as something that you have to avoid. So Francisca will hit my face in various ways, and she will start slow. Start slow. and so on. So, you will do this too, but you will start slow. The moment you start to react, uh, hit me one more time. If, if I do something like this, if I react, if I, then you, it's too much for the person. You slow down. If the person stays cool, you can ask, do you want more? And you hit harder. <laughs> The goal is not to say, oh yeah, uh, I can take pain, give me more pain. No, the goal is to stay relaxed under stress. Okay, so try it. You? Uh, where's Raiko? Where's Kushrin? <laughs> okay, uh, du musst das abnehmen. Du musst das abnehmen. Okay. So start slow, yeah. One, one at a time. You hit, you hit your partner, your partner hits you. You hit your partner, your partner hits you. Get stronger, stronger. You can take more than you think. Okay, um, we could go, go, uh, keep going, but I think I'm already. Do you have a time? I think we can do this forever. Yeah, we can do this forever. Um, so yeah, it's five minutes. So yeah, you like it? Okay. There's more of this. Uh, so I took like this exercise from the rough housing community in Denmark. Um, so I've been like you know um, going to a lot of different festivals and going to a lot of workshops, and this is one exercise I took. Um, so this is not meditation, this is not sports, but it uh, kind of symbolizes two things that I like about sports and meditation. The sports make you feel alive, it makes you go into your body. You feel your face now, right? You feel, oh wow, okay, I, I, I'm just awake now. You don't need a coffee, you just need to do some sports and suddenly your body tells you, wow, I'm there. Meditation, on the other hand, does a lot of things. It changes your, the way you react, your behavior patterns. It makes you just generally... How are you? Um, Good to see you. And so staying relaxed under stress is, I think, one of the biggest benefits of meditation. And yeah, I hope you like exercises. I hope I could... Thank you so much. Whoa. Thank you, Marek. The next speaker, please welcome on stage. Lisa Gashi. Um, yeah, I, I got your information very late. So, but uh, Lisa Gashi is a civil society activist. Yeah, a civil society activist. That's it. Welcome. Thank you. I don't think that actually don't need a PowerPoint anyway, so the title of my talk is Paid Forward. My name is Lisa Gashi and I'm a child of transition. I grew up while Kosovo had to undergo transformational change through its political and economical structure. Kosovo came out of war in 1999 and we had to start everything from zero. We started everything from scratch and we needed to adapt and connect to one another in order to get forward. 20 years now from that process, we're still struggling, struggling to build a proper functioning institution and clear checks and balances, as well as a strong civil society and a good private sector that would incentivize people to stay and want to make a change. 
My goal in life has been always to pay it forward and make sure that the people that helped me throughout the journey will get along and will get ahead. I think often we mistake the chances we get in life and the, the power of the journey because we are so much focused on them getting the product out, making sure the outcome is there and making sure that people see it. But the truth of the matter is that we are in the process of paying it forward and we are in the process of learning how to adapt and succeed together. And I would love to see more of it happening because visibly or invisibly, people have helped out in many ways. And for many of us that are in this room, if we, if we try to get back and reflect on our journeys, how we got here, I'm pretty sure there's countless mentors, supporters, family, friends. And for me, the biggest need to see Kosovo forward is by trying to see the best out of this place. Because often the struggling and migrant youth out there think that the option is Germany, Austria, Switzerland, or anywhere. But the truth is that you can make a change whenever you, wherever you are. And at any time of the day or at night, it's all up to you. The power of paying it forward and wanting to make a change and wanting to recognize the difference that you could make in people's life is stronger than you could ever think. And how can we use technology and all these methodologies around us to really just get us back to being a bit more human? And always think, like Einstein said, not everything that is counted really counts. And not, the, every, not everything that is counted truly makes a big difference. So try to be a bit less defensive and more approachable. At the end of the day, strangers are just the friends you haven't met. So please pay it forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we have one last speaker. And her wonderful name is Flutra. It means butterfly. Oh shit, sorry. I, I didn't say that, I didn't say that. That means anything else, right? Yeah. And um, she's very passionate about STEM outreach and youth empowerment. Please welcome on stage, Flutura. Thank you. Yeah, just here. Mm -hmm. cool. yeah. okay. um, well, we started these hyper talks with uh, is there life on Mars? And uh, the reason why I'm here today is because when I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut. Um, well, <laughs> I want to start, um, first of all, just as a former IPCA Foundation employee, it's such an honor to be back here as a speaker now three, three years later. Uh, my talk is called A Series of RC Planes. Uh, well, it all started when uh, I was a kid and I was very curious about uh, science in general. I had so many questions. I was super curious about everything that was happening around. Uh, but then, as uh, Lisa mentioned, in the late 90s, the big conflict happened. And just as I started my first grade, I had to stop school. And actually, I never got the chance to finish it. So I hope I don't get in trouble for that. <laughs> But after that, the whole place was in a big chaos and um, education never really became an asset of our country. Uh, usually throughout the years uh, during school, we just, uh, we sort of just went through the books and never did anything hands-on, which was really killed my curiosity throughout the years. But uh, after two years ago, I decided to do something about it and um, I built uh, my first RC plane. Um, RC, yeah. Um, RC stands for uh, radio control or remote control. When we were kids, uh, most of us, I think, we had uh, either cars or trains as toys that we commanded from a uh, radio controller. Those tiny things that we did, uh, which I have it uh, here, that one there on the left, uh, that was my first uh, radio controller. <laughs> okay. Um, I bought it online and um, I started, that, that's my kitchen for a week. That, that it looked like that, it was a whole mess because my partner and I, we just decided to do something in our spare time after work, something fun but also cool. Um, so we took it outside to test it. It was uh, close to uh, Lake Badovci. Uh, and then 
It flew for two hours till our whole batteries were drained. It was really exciting because we also came up with different models and we were flying around in our university backyard and we saw that lots of kids were very excited about what was happening. And I just found myself explaining them how physics works, which apparently at school they had no clue how all the laws came into action. I, I, we decided to sort of come up, use different materials, cardboards. Uh, we also used what was left over from pizzas during like nights in. And we just came up with different models that could actually fly. And it was fun for us. But then a year later, I found myself, oh, and then we upgraded to quadcopters, which were more advanced, more technology inside. Uh, and then a year later, I found myself um, organizing different workshops, teaching kids about physics, electronics, aerodynamics, and what most importantly, inspire them to be curious about inventing and exploring. Uh, this was from uh, last year. I got the chance to go to, um, to work with the director of aviation and aerospace in Denver, Colorado. Um, I met lots of inspiring people who actually just pushed me forward to do what I was doing. And when I came back, I started organizing a series of workshop called Build and Fly. I got a small fund by uh, US uh, Embassy through Youth Council, which I'm a member at. And, um, those are photos from the workshops that we did around Kosovo. Uh, and that's the logo because we wanted to build and then fly whatever we, will bu we were building. And therefore, the RC Club, the first one in Kosovo, was founded. Uh, we um, organized the workshops in a way that um, uh, we tried different methods, but at the end we came up with the one that worked the best. Uh, the first one was an introduction to RC. We were just putting everything that was going inside the electronics so the kids could actually, not just kids, but everybody who were participating in that could actually touch what they were um, trying to build. So they, could, they had the first hands-on experience, even though some of them had a background in engineering but never did any projects uh, like that one. So it just, uh, the first one, so as I mentioned, is just an introduction to the RC. And then the second part, we used flight simulators. We connected the radio controllers to the PCs so they could uh, actually see how um, they would fly outside. It was a great way to sort of save our planes in order to not crash them at the very beginning. And then after that, they actually build their own planes. This was the project that was organized in November last year, uh, which was when the RC Club was founded. We had other ones before that. Um, what was really interesting and it was really important was that uh, more than 70% of the applicants were young girls, which was very inspiring for me to keep doing this so I could push them to sort of be more interested in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, after the workshops, usually they last two days. So within a weekend, we could usually we taught uh, youngsters about physics and electronics more than school did in nine or 12 years during their uh, years at school. And then the planes actually flew again. <laughs> um, the reason why I've been doing this is to uh, reach, to sort of encourage kids uh, to be more involved in this area. Uh, since Hannah mentioned earlier, because now I'm feeling like this talk is becoming very holistic of all the things that we talked earlier, uh, it's going to be one of the jobs uh, th that is sort of predicted to be one of the future jobs, the drone controlling, which is very important skill nowadays because it's becoming this huge industry, especially uh, if you use it for uh, fun activities where you can also get educated. One of the main um, targets for me is to sort of promote informal education, which was very important for me during my, my years. And um, also uh, to have fun while learning. And at the end, I just want to um, sort of tell you some statistics uh, throughout this time. For two years now, we built more than uh, 20 uh, RC planes, gliders, uh, quadcopters, and we crashed most of them. Uh, but also we had the chance to uh, train or give new skills to uh, almost 50 uh, participants who were part of the workshops. And at the end, I just brought these, which I cut earlier. These are just three pieces of balsa wood, which is a piece of wood that is very light. So I'm going to turn it into a glider and just to sort of see uh, how it works. So I'm just going to put these together like this. And during all this time of building, we bring yeah. all the people who 
we're participating of the Hyper Talks on stage. And okay. thank you very much. It was so good. Yeah. So, um, so, so this is oh, one of the fast. colliders. Hmm? It's yeah. very fast. So I'm just going to, I put some rubber bands in the front to, uh, to have uh, the right gravitational point, which is one of the things that we also learn in order for a plane to fly. So you have to balance it. So the gravitational point is on point. And then we'll just going to throw it. Ah, it fell. OK. I'll yeah. give it a harder push. <laughs> Cool. Whoa. Okay. Uh, thank you, and may the force be with you. Thank you very much. It's a very interesting field. Can I take my watch back? Of course. But please stay. We're going to just say goodbye to everyone. It's, um, yeah, you're all amazing. You too. It's really nice to be always here in, in, in Tokotech and do the, the hyper talks. And if you have any events and you want to have some hyper talks, you just call me, you know. And thank you very much. Have a nice evening. That was the hyper talks. Thank you to all of you. It was great. And